Hi everybody and welcome to the latest episode of the Curator Series with the wonderful Eric Thomas. Hello. Like you got that hand movement perfect. Yeah, I've been practicing. <laughs> you doing your research? So, doing the research, yeah, exactly. <laughs> got uh, checked the colour of the room, thought what colour shirts you wear. Uh, generally, exactly. and that's the best match. You've got it, you've nailed yeah, it, you've nailed exactly. it. Um, so thank you so much for coming by to the studio and uh, for recording some beautiful uh, music on, not a guitar, but a guest instrument. The lute. Yeah, nice. Tell us about the piece you recorded. Uh, so the piece I played was uh, the Calata alla Spagnola, Ditto Terzetti di Joan Ambrosio D'Alza, which is a long title. That's a huge uh, title. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, the title, as, as we'll talk about, is quite important as it's all got like, kind of shows different elements ah. of what he was bringing uh, to the dance, like within the print. Because most of the other dances have like shorter titles, just like Calata okay. or uh, Calata alla Spagnola ah. or Pavana. So is it, uh, is it from a series of dances then? Uh, no, so this one is kind of, well, it comes after a series of Calatas and Calata alla Spagnolas, but it's not part of like a series. Okay. So earlier, uh, the first dances in the print have a kind of proto da- uh, proto dance suites. Okay. So it would have a pavana, saltarello, uh, followed by a piva. Ah, okay. So and this is the first kind of instance okay. of that. Okay. And, print. and get, oh, that's this state that was literally the first time that that, that, that style would come. Uh, yes. And be written yeah, down. yeah, yeah. And obviously written down in tablature, not written down in our standard notation. Yeah, exactly. An Italian lute tablature. Ah, okay. Which yeah. is similar to guitar tablature, but it's the other way around. So the top string is at the bottom. Okay. Uh, because it's like seeing through the neck of your instrument ah, is the best way to visualise it. Of course it is. And yeah. then it makes complete sense. Yeah, yeah. So actually, it's a, it's actually harder for us guitarists reading our normal tablature, thinking like, this is kind of the, the wrong way around. It's upside down. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's actually a little bit more intuitive for the player, this Italian tablature. Yeah, yeah, tablature. yeah. Okay, great. So um, to give people an idea, um, obviously you can all watch Eric's fantastic performance that comes up at the end of this interview, this chat that we're having. Um, and you're probably going to watch it a few times because the sound world is so different on the loop from a lot of the, the, a lot of the repertoire that you hear on the gallery. But what, what period are we talking with this music? When, when, how, many, you know, how many centuries? So this, uh, so this print is from the first set of loop prints to be printed. Ever. So ever. <laughs> so uh, Ottaviano Petrucci, who was the first person uh, to uh, adapt music print, Mm-hmm. So like the t- it was printing with movable type. He was the first person okay. to do that. There are some earlier examples of uh, printed music of like chant, but this okay. is like first printed <laughs> movable type. Wow. Uh, and he was also the first person to figure that out for the lute. Okay. So okay. this uh, there was two prints before this by Francesco Spinacino yep. of a kind of a repertoire called Intabulations, mm-hmm. which is a focal piece which has been arranged uh, for the lute. Yeah. And then this was the. There was a lost print, uh, and then this was the the next print by Dalza, which is of dances and a couple of Ishikaris and then tabulations. But it's a very dance focused okay. print. And this is super old. So give me a century here. Come oh on. yeah, sixteenth, beginning 16th. of the sixteenth century. But okay. it's very influenced by what happened in the fifteenth century. Okay, okay. So you might remember um, curator series regulars. Um, though I think the very first curator series with, with Bradford Werner, he's a, a oh, Canadian yes, guitarist, yeah. yeah, and runs this as classical guitar, and he did a vocal intabulation on classical guitar, of course, so it was a it was a trans- transcription across the guitar, um, and obviously today we're getting music played on a lute, so yes, an authentic yeah, instrument, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, okay, so you've got to explain this instrument to people, because um, they're just used to six strings. Yeah, I know, <laughs> so this is the six course lute. So it's actually probably a bit more similar to the guitar than you would think. We call them courses because uh, each course is made up of two pairs of strings. Mm -hmm. Uh, So on this instrument, uh, the bottom, the sixth course, which is a G Mm -hmm. in 415, uh, is strung in octaves. So it would be octaves because the sound would be quite dull. So they wanted to give it the next harmonic in the harmonic series. Okay, liven it up. Okay. Yeah, liven up. The More sound, vitality. Exactly. Yeah. And then for this early repertoire, you could have uh, single strings on the fifth and the fourth course, uh, but this loop has octaves uh, up uh, to the top one. And then the top course, uh, which is called the chanterelle, oh. uh, is single. Though there's historical examples uh, where that would be double as well. But I think generally for modern playing, it just keeps your life easy. Okay. To have it single, okay. it's hard to keep in tune. Also, it probably makes that melody 
be carried really well and very clear in the class. Exactly. Like that, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, guitar players, we all sort of know like 12 string guitars, which is more of a folky kind of sound, you know, um, the steel string, 12 string, and they've got the double, the double yeah. strings. Because um, obviously you've got a peg for, for each course, haven't you? Yeah, yeah it's so, a peg for each course, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. you've also got to fine tune these octaves. Exactly. Perfect. I think, uh, so for me personally, I don't know if I should say this, but I find it takes longer to tune the six course loop where you're trying to get the octaves right and the yeah. unisons right in particular than the Theorbo, okay. which is another, it's just a big a guitar beast. I play. But that's 14 strings, but you're only trying to tune the one, so you can basically just do it and it's fine. Yeah, of course, I'm trying to get them to match. Yeah, it's trying to get them to match and then uh, sometimes, and lots of the times you'll get them to match and then you go on stage and it all just goes completely out yeah. because the humidity's different and you're like, of course. Then, then they're close enough. But do you think, I mean, I, I think we've got so acute with temperament now, you know, and, 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 and tuning everything so exact that yeah. we're less forgiving, you know, um, yeah. of, of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. These, these intonation issues, you know. Um, so, okay, so it's, a fa- it is, it's, it's got similarities, but it's also very different. What about the, the frets? So the frets are, uh, well, I think, I think the frets are one of the big differences. Okay. Uh, is that they're made of gut, so you, mm-hmm. and you tie your own frets. Uh, basically so it's quite it's unlike the guitar if you're going to refret the guitar yeah. you have to take it to the luthier yeah. and they're very fixed the positions yeah they're fixed exactly. positions these you so you kind of like tie them on in a knot and you can move them about so this is talking about temperaments yeah uh, so guitarists the you know uh, the <laughs> modern musicians simple minded creatures and equal temperament uh, there's a, a wonderful array of what's called temperaments or it was a very big concern of renaissance uh, theoreticians uh, of, simple minded so, creatures yeah no everything's just equal and like it's all the same and it's not okay, it's, okay. Uh, it's not as easy it's not as easy as that okay, you know okay, okay. It's, more, uh, it's more complex or, well just to, so to, to explain about equal temperament yeah uh, for the viewers is basically all the so all the fifths and octaves are perfect mm-hmm. and to do that you have to make a compromise and you make all the thirds out of tune yeah basically so like a piano from the bottom to the top yeah, yeah. exactly and that's so yeah exactly the bottom row of the piano yeah. is the same as the top because yeah. if you just tune it uh, like in a Pythagorean tuning the bottom of the yeah. piano is going to be different from the top exactly and that does make life very hard yeah yeah uh, but renaissance for the renaissance uh, musicians and theorists the thirds were really really important mm-hmm. and they wanted the thirds to be uh, mathematically as close to in tune as possible mm-hmm. uh, so uh, they devised lots of different types of uh, temperaments and so as a loop player so it is actually uh, but the it is theoretically uh, fine for lutes to be tuned in equal temperament okay if they're playing solo music that yeah. was in okay. the in the treatises it's okay but obviously we play with other instruments as well yeah a lot of the time a lot of the time you're accompanying voice and, and, and yeah exactly and consorts, yeah and and you have to just deal with what they choose so you can yeah. move your frets uh you have to move your frets and sometimes and your fret and they're not always going to be straight yeah, so if I'm playing some of your frets are, are, are really off. Yeah. Not off, but they're they're no, they're slanty. Yeah, yeah, they're slanty. yeah. You'll see that when you're watching Eric play. We've got some close-ups of the fingerboard. You'll see that they're not completely straight because yeah. you need you need the the spacings to be different and the different yeah. octaves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. F for it. Okay. So yeah, I mean, we are some like the creatures then. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> know, about to the complexity of this, um, even just for the ear. I mean, the adjustment that you're having to make. Between pieces, I guess you in a concert program, would you you would maybe adjust these things? Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I think it depends as a personal preference mm-hmm. on uh, how fussy you are. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I mean, if as the song, if you're going from a piece, say an F minor, mm-hmm. to then doing a piece in E minor, yeah. you're definitely going to want to change your frets. Of course, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. like anything between a, a big move between sharps or flats to kind of. That you need to balance those out because the yeah. frets are going to be in different places. Yeah, exactly. So you're, so, yeah. you're also accommodating where the ear is moving into the, the sort of environment it's moving into next. You yeah. don't want it to be too jarring. Exactly. You know? um, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and and that's I just and that's kind of what these uh, lots of these preludes are about. It's ah, like okay. I mean, so I mean, lots of the the people say it's like they would play a prelude and move their frets during it. I don't. I don't think that's exactly true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I think it helps you. It would help the listener adjust to when you fiddled about to what yeah, to what's going course, on of and course. kind of yeah. introduce you into that before you go into your dances or yeah. uh, your intabulations uh, or whatever. 
Okay, yeah. so there's so much to consider before even embarking on actually playing the music on the thing. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, I think sometimes about the, the things that guitarists worry about. You know, like. Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, there's no nails here, so that's a bit easier for you. Yes. <laughs> but like, you know, it's posture, it's footstools, it's gizmos, it's all the different things, it's tunings and stuff like that. And I feel like before you've even kicked the ball, before you even go go in, there's so much that you've had to consider. Um. So, a, a subject that I thought might be really interesting for people on the gallery not just hearing about the instrument and and the detail you go into about all the things that you you need to know about to even just start this music you used to be a guitar player I did yes you You were on the dark side I was I did uh, the dark side yeah Uh, I know and obviously uh, studied with you. Oh, yeah, uh, you did. Yeah. And then, and then you thought I can't. And then thought, oh, no, sorry, sorry, that's too much, too much. <laughs> Got to go and play the uh, What did I yeah. do? Sorry, <laughs> I must have really, you know, it's a, it's a damaging experience. Um, so yeah, so tell me, how did you go from, you know, because I remember, you know, I remember your final undergraduate recital. I know you're now, you're now sort of at the very end of of your doctoral candidate experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I remember way back your final recital, and there was like. There was Balkan music, there was Dusan Bogdanovich, there yeah, was yeah. Bach, Pellard and Fugu, I think you did the PFA. Yeah, you? I did the PFA. Yeah, <laughs> and you had, um, we were doing, I think we were doing some Walton as well. Uh, or, or... No, no, actually it was Berkeley. Yeah, it was, it was two yeah. movements of the Sonatina, not the hard one. Uh, yeah, no, we, <laughs> I don't know, they both could have been the first one. Yeah, you had some, yeah, 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 you had yeah, PFA, yeah. you had Balkan miniatures and you had yeah, Berkeley yeah. in your program. I think program. I saw it as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So that was like, you know, that was a final undergraduate program and now... You're immersed in this world of early music. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. how did that transition happen? Well, I mean, I think uh, for my kind of guitar, I think I think the lute has kind of always been there, like in the background from when I started yeah. uh, classical guitar. So I played electric first, yeah, uh, and then kind of moved when I was fifteen or sixteen uh, to the classical guitar. One of the first pieces I played, I think it was a Pavan uh, by Louis de Milan, okay, and mm-hmm. I, uh, the Vuela composer, uh, and I was like. Oh, this was kind of like you know, it was kind of simple to like get you into it, yeah. like simple in inverted commas. Yeah. Uh, but also, I was like, oh, this isn't how, like, music I understand works. You're like, what's that? And it, and it, okay. I, th- I think it kind of like put a curiosity there. Okay. So the repertoire maybe first. The, yeah, 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 I think okay. so. And, and then one of the for the, the kind of first exam I sat, uh, I played the Fairy Round by uh, Anthony Holborn. Oh yeah, lovely. But also. And I was kind of becoming aware of the lute through like Julian Breen, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but because of his uh, the way I mean, he, so he more accurately played the lute guitar. Yeah, it was kind of a specially structured lute. Yeah. So I think the kind of sound world at the time, in my judgmental kind of sixteen year old way that people are, I was like, oh, it just sounds like twang a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but actually, I have a lot of like well, you sometimes know. it still does, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, but, no, no, yeah. no, 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 definitely still can sometimes. But I mean. Going back to Julian Boone's mm-hmm. recordings now, you can be like, yeah. "Oh yeah, like yeah, yeah, they're really good." But I think at the time, yeah, of like just the when you kind of the aesthetic the, is really yeah, different. it's I a mean, different you, thing. You yeah, know, I mean, uh, Bream has a has a it, it's kind of it's a beautiful sound and it's incredibly versatile. And I mean, people talk often about how much timbre he used in his performances, maybe more than a lot of other guitarists. You know, the extremes yeah. of timbre. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. also, he did have quite a thin sound. I mean, like I have no issue saying it. I mean, sometimes you think like. Don't say anything bad about Scovia. Don't say anything bad about Bream. Don't say anything bad about yeah, Williams. Yeah. I I wouldn't really, but I would also acknowledge the fact that at times Bream's sound is quite thin, like on the classical guitar. Yeah. And I've always thought there's something in that sound. It's quite um, it's quite glassy almost. It's quite erudite sort of sound. It's it's quite elegant. So it can go towards the look quite nicely. I yeah, think. yeah, a, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, that yeah. lightness to it. It's not trying to be a big dark almost pianistic sort yeah, of Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know? it's very, he plays it completely stylistically appropriately. Okay. Like, yeah, I think, yeah. like, I mean, not technically, yeah. but musically, yeah. you're like, that is, or, or I mean, not like that's how it should go, but that is very much one option yeah. of how that should go. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like, yeah. it all makes complete sense. You're not like, exactly, he's not like coming on like, playing it like Villa Lobos. Yeah, yeah, you I mean, know, I'm yeah, going yeah, to yeah. tackle the loop in this way. Yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I can already imagine the comments underneath because I've said a negative comment about Julian Bream. I mean, I love Julian Bream. I've got all these records. He's just one of my favourite compo- uh, guitarists. Just some constructive <laughs> criticism. Yeah, everyone can, uh, <laughs> exactly. you know, everyone can know, benefit. Julian Bream, <laughs> my opinion, for two years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's that guy. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, the, something in his sensitivity definitely lent itself to that, that crossing yeah, yeah, yeah. over to the other instrument. Um, okay, so you're here in Bream. You're you know you're sort of 
you've, you've gone from the very dark side of electric guitar to the slightly less the dark thing, side yeah. of classical. Yeah. But then, you know, then, how do you get this in your, your hands and start yeah. working with it? So I think uh, when I was a third year university, yeah. I kind of found the Lute Society. Yeah. And uh, you can rent Lutes from them. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. And they, I, don't, I don't think they do this now. But, I mean, you can rent Lutes. Yeah. But they sent it in the post to Alison House, which is the music department at Edinburgh University. Uh, and yeah, so one day, like, the, the, <laughs> the administrator, the, the, the secretary was just like him and found me and was like, there's a huge box for you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went and kind of unpacked, uh, unpacked my loot. And then I think that summer, I went to Cambridge to do the Cambridge Early Music, the Early Summer Music School oh, uh, nice. courses. So that was with Jacob Herringman. Yeah. And then and you're playing with uh, recorders and vials and singers mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like and then and then that's where that's where I really caught the music bug of like yeah. oh, okay. this is I'm gonna do this school, yeah, 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 I think so, yeah. And how's it developed for you? I mean like you know, do you feel that you do a lot more chamber music playing? Are you playing a lot more with other people than you were when you were in a more sort of solitary mode of being a guitar player? Uh yeah, definitely. I mean I think uh, the the lute and the theorbo is a part of these ensembles. Yeah. So like you you are just gonna play with them. Yeah. I mean I think I mean and I think that's less so with the guitar. Yeah. If you're gonna do a chamber thing, you're like, hey, uh, my violin friend or yeah. my flute friend, yeah. this is what we're gonna do. And can we maybe transcribe the music or yeah, the exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you've not just got a continual part ready to go, you know. Yeah. Um, and what about that musically as well? I mean, that opens up a huge amount of compromise and good chamber playing skills, you know. Yeah, it does. I think. I mean, I really like playing uh, continual and uh, from uh, figured bass because uh, it gives you the choice. Yeah. Uh, to do mm-hmm. stuff, I, I think one of the things, or about guitar playing for me, not like technically, mm-hmm. but the kind of chamber music was that you, you know basically you got to play what's written. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like it could be quite hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it can be really hard. Yeah. Uh, and uh, with Bass Continual, like if you're trying something and it's just not working, you can, you can just you not can do it. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's fine. Mm-hmm. And generally, like the kind of mm-hmm. simpler the better. Well, often that, like, that works for the sort of the sum of its parts, like the whole ensemble's yeah, yeah, choice. Yeah. You know, I mean, often with guitar, one of the biggest drawbacks in chamber music, and of course it's getting better now because players are getting more experienced at a younger age. And then tending to do chamber music earlier. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, it used yeah, to be yeah. a thing that's like, it's really hard to encourage guitarists to do because they just want to focus on their solo repertoire yeah. and trying to get them to stretch out and, and realise how much of a broader musical education they're going to get playing with other people or accompanying other people. And I often think, like, you know, when you sometimes see guitarists in a chamber music setting, they're sweating trying to get their bit right. Yeah. yeah and yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. it's only the, the, the melody's up here. Could you please acknowledge the melody and think about the direction it's going yeah, rather exactly. than desperately trying to nail your bit because it's hard. You because know? it's like it's actually not that important. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's actually, it's actually yeah, in the yeah, background, yeah. to be honest, you know. Uh, yeah. Maybe simplifying it, you know, removing some notes, making sure you just have the key things that are required to make sure the music goes in yeah. the right direction. I mean it's funny, like at different guitar festivals, I really like it when there's early musicians present, whether it be loop players or theorists that, that are there to, to to teach classes or sort of even just even just hanging out with the guitar players. Yeah. Because it does sort of broaden, you know, but the purpose of what your music's about, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, uh, well, whenever you learn an instrument, what you hear is different from what someone else hears when yeah. they learn on, a, on an instrument. Like, I mean, I get surprised talking to some guitarists now and they'll be like, oh, the tone on the, on the A finger was really bad. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, it was fine. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, 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 it was yeah. fine. Or like, yeah, maybe it was slightly further back on the E string. But like, yeah. overall, like, it was, it was really good. But it still sounded like a yeah, guitar, yeah. you know, and it was in that wheelhouse. I mean, there's yeah. a, there is an issue with uniformity of sound on guitar that I think... I think the instrument in itself, it, it, it's never going to really create that. You know, your fingers are all different lengths, your nails are all different quality, different shapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're never going to be able to produce that, unless you wear false nails, I guess, you're not going to be able to produce that similar quality of sound across every finger all the yeah. time, even the velocity and the depth of the stroke. So sometimes I feel like guitarists are aiming for something that's actually impossible. And as soon as you learn that, like, it's a compromise, yeah. you know, and, and you have the, the privilege like you do as a loop player or a guitarist of touching the string like a harpist would you, you you're not just pressing a key and waiting for the mechanism and sound yeah. to do its job 
you know, you're touching the music, you get the vibration, you get that contact point. Yeah. That's an incredible privilege. And that that's where you can start to shape the sound and make it different, make it unique, make yeah. it have its own voice, you know. Um, and do you think you're finding your own your own musical voice with, with, with the move to lute and, and, and in this instrument now? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I think one of the great things about uh, the lute, I mean, I thought it was interesting, the uniformity. Yeah. Uh, yeah for several reasons. But I mean, I, I mean, I think... Or one of the things I really like about the lute is uh, the way you get the sound out of the instrument is like a personal thing. There's not yeah. like kind of one way. There's like okay. a few different ways. Yeah. And I mean, uh, so I think the kind of like, with, the, with this is with guitarists as well, but the, I think with the lots of lute players, mm -hmm. or if you, if you kind of know who they are, mm -hmm. you can listen, you can tell who they are by the recording of it. And yeah. just the way they get the tone okay. and they have differences. So like Paul Adet, Jacob Lindberg, and Nigel North, Mm -hmm. All sound completely they're different. Very different, like yeah, but they're all great. Yeah. But they all have a completely different way yeah. of yeah. Of, or and, and Hopkins and Smith as well, or how they yeah. get the tone, uh, out of the instrument, mm -hmm. and just yeah, the, 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 their technical ideas are all different. It's interesting as well. I mean, that reflects to something I think about quite a lot because there's you know classical guitar is you know it's not the most popular instrument in the world, but it is a popular instrument, and yeah. you could probably arguably look and say it's more popular than a lute, for example. You know, you could probably oh, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but like, it's interesting you mentioned those three players who are all fantastic players and all have an entirely different sound. Whereas sometimes in the guitar world, it's hard to find those characters with such unique individual musical sort of expression. I think it was easier when you're looking at someone like John Williams or Julian Bream because it's like yeah. yin and yang almost. You know, it's exactly really, yeah, really yeah, totally yeah. different and both very interesting and very good in, in different ways and will appeal to some people's tastes more than others but like nowadays in the guitar world it's it, it's important to try and create in the student this idea that like your voice musically has to rise to the top of everything you're doing because if not everyone just kind of sounds exactly yeah. the same you know and the, 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 the more accurately the instrument is constructed you know not movable frets very yeah. very nice sounding intonation you know that you can't really adjust other than just the string length yeah. These things are, they narrow the, the, maybe the expressive, unique, independent qualities of the musician, you know? I mean, I definitely, I, yeah, I think, uh, from my perspective, there's a, a, a uniformity in guitar mm -hmm. construction. Yeah. I mean, I know there's, uh, like, some differences and you get double tops yeah. and, like, lattice bracing, but I think particularly, yeah. I mean, I think most concert guitarists prefer uh, the kind of lattice Oh, what's the guy's name again? Oh, with the double top, the Nomex, the Smallman. Greg yeah, Smallman, Greg Smallman. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think... Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, for my taste, that's not really my kind of sound yeah, that yeah, I would yeah. like, but yes, a lot of guitarists like this because there's a, there's a feeling that it gives them more volume yeah. and more power. I mean, if you're standing at the back of a hall, it still sounds like a classical guitar. It's not yeah. a trumpet. It doesn't sound like a drum. It doesn't sound... Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, we're, I always think, like, when people say, oh, some really terrible words are used about volume, like... People say, oh, that's a cannon, or that sounds huge. And you're like, it doesn't... How many decibels louder is a Greg Smallman guitar than a Torres guitar? I, mean, I wish someone would actually do that. Research. Yeah, I mean, I think... It's not, yeah. it's not even a decibel, you know, or whatever. Yeah. It, or it's very, very small amount. It's not like suddenly the guitar is as loud as a trumpet, yeah. and the other one just sounds like a guitar. It's not increasing the volume by double, or by a third, or by a fifth. Or, you know, I wonder how much is it? I'd love to know. Because yeah. a loop cuts through. I mean, I yeah, like the the sound of your guitar will get back, get to the back of the hall. Yeah. Like, like if you're playing it, like pro projecting. Yeah. It will be fine. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Generally, I think, <laughs> and also how many, like, I mean, I think, oh, well, one of the things I think is interesting about like education of classical guitar. <laughs> I love, the, that, I love the way like I'm asking you how did you get to the loot and you're like right. I have so many problems with the education <laughs> yeah. no no I just think it's, no, but is it because like you think I think of like uh, conservatories yeah I and know. they are training I mean obviously yeah, like yeah. you you, you lecture on one yeah. uh, but for other instruments it's yeah. like you know you're going to be an orchestral violinist yeah. or you're going to yeah. do this, this and, and you've got this, this the part. but kind of for classical guitar it's kind of like you're going to be a concert soloist like you know, Ooh, yeah. Like yeah. and and uh, you know and uh, mm -hmm. the, like I'm not going to be a concert soloist. No, most people aren't going to be yeah. high level concert yeah. soloists. Yeah, David Russell or something. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. that's, yeah. that's just the way it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so most people probably don't need uh, mm -hmm. small guitars. Yeah, like yeah. you're just yeah. not going to need exactly. that. Like, exactly. Yeah. And I I really like 
I mean, obviously, uh, a kind of famous classical guitar channel, the Seacast Guitar, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where uh, I always think whenever whenever anyone gets an old guitar, yeah, like it just sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> like I just think, like oh, like that guitar actually sounds really yeah. nice. Uh, well, there's, there's there's a lot of variety in the sound. There, there's a lot of depth, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of complexity in the sound. Therefore, then it can help you express complex ideas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I used to play with a violinist a lot and we used to we used to play together, you know, almost every sort of week we would rehearse and play together. And one time he got he got a loan of a, a, a really amazing violin that was modelled after a Guarneri del Jesu violin. Yeah. And he's after and he loved it, but after a while he said it's provoking me to play a certain way. It's provoking me to make these musical decisions that maybe aren't the musical decisions I would make if I didn't have this you know, big, rich, yeah, chocolatey, yeah. powerful sort of sounding violin, you know, so that's, and that was the first thing maybe I thought, oh yeah, of course, like, you know, you, you, musicality can be sort of, it can be knocked off track a little bit by like the shiny thing, like, you know, yeah, or the, or the, yeah, really, yeah. the really sort of immediate like feedback, the positive like, you know, endorphins, Here we go. <laughs> great, that sounded brilliant, I think that's good, keep going, keep going, yeah, yeah. You know? um, and then you're not necessarily delving any further into to, to, to the to the sound, you know, to see what's hidden. Yeah, what's there, yeah. You know? Um I don't know how we got on to go on to sound so much there, you know. Um But I, I think the sound was an important reason. Yeah. Uh, and kind of the I feel like with the with the loot, uh I mean that this could be to do with just like my guitar technique or whatever. <laughs> but I felt a lot closer to the sound uh on the loot, like the so when you kind of get into the string you project like the whole yeah. instrument kind of yeah. vibrates uh, against mm-hmm. you and I just felt like a lot closer to it okay so a more uh, personal connection with the sound yeah the yeah, yeah yeah the, 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 the guitar maybe felt slightly kind of separate okay I think okay. for me personally yeah. I mean I don't think that's for most people but yeah. comparing the two and thinking about it I think that was that was the thing okay okay and would you go back uh, I've been thinking uh, I mean because obviously lute players buy instruments all the time yeah, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as as we want as to do. do. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You can't see it behind the camera now. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, I would, uh, maybe a romantic guitar. Oh, nice. That's coming up. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, just checking out the options. Okay. Okay. Uh, nice. Yeah, and I think because uh, uh, I was drawn to this earlier, sixteenth century yeah. uh, repertoire uh, to begin with, uh, but I find kind of teaching. Uh, I really enjoy teaching the romantic. Mm-hmm. Uh, guitar mm-hmm. music, yeah, uh, and like you know, cost and yeah, uh, merits and stuff. So it'd be really nice yeah. to kind of be like, and I feel, uh, even though like I kind of specialized in another musical language, I think it helped with understanding uh, yes. that one as well. Mm-hmm. As how like going into something in depth doesn't mean like you forget about how other music goes. Yeah, like it's, it's just generally made you musician yeah, like yeah. kind of across the board yeah that's that's uh, I think the key yeah. yeah that's the key well listen Eric it's been an absolute pleasure to have you back no, um, thank you. or have you on the channel and um, and just see how your musical voice is sort of developing and um, everyone I encourage you to check out Eric's beautiful performance of a piece that I cannot pronounce yet so Eric the piece is called again uh, the uh, Carlotta alla Spagnola Ditto Terzetti di Gion Ambrosia Dalsa Oh, before we go, we have one big thank you to to say to Alex McCartney. I think that's the gentleman's yes. name, who is a, a lutenist and friend, a colleague of Eric's. Because this isn't Eric's loot, this is Alex's loot. Um, Eric made the journey through from Edinburgh today, all the way to Glasgow to record. And I said, right then, let's have a look at your loot. Opened up the case. And uh, it was not. Uh, the loot was still in Edinburgh on the couch. <laughs> Forgot to put it in. Um, so it was, <laughs> it was almost an existential episode of the the creator series. It was you know, true. We yeah, yeah. Have, we could have imagined the loot. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and mind the uh, mind the performance. <laughs> yeah. So we we had a a very quick um, contact with with Alex, who's, who lives in Glasgow, and then Uber also assisted Thanks. us in the making of this episode. And there was a bit of like flying across town to get this loot. Um, but you know something it shows the collegiate nature of your um, your of fellow colleagues yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know you might you might have a fight on your hands because the guitar player if you wanted to borrow a guitar they might be like yeah but I'll play the, I'll play the gig as well yeah. very much. Um, and it's, yeah. this is the same look as you you own uh, yeah so it's made by Luke Emmett of Orlando Lutz and uh, it's, he, I think he's it's based on an early 16th century look okay. uh, I, I can't remember the <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it sounds absolutely beautiful. So I encourage you go and check out Eric's performance. Um, coming up next, and thank you once again. No, thank you very much for having me. Pleasure. <laughs>